Hello everyone, welcome to our service of morning prayer for Sunday, January 30th, 2022. It's the fourth Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. And today, our service comes from the Book of Common Prayer for Canada. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, as the waters cover the, the sea. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all every creature. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God our Heavenly Father but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought, ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have re received at his hand to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice under the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And now the absolution. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now that prayer which Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 71. And today we read verses 1 to 6. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was at the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson from the Old Testament is from the book of Jeremiah, verses 4 to 10. Here God calls the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, Sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to, and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and will rescue you, declares the Lord. And the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Say today, see today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so now the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth does worship thee. The Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, Thine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. And thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, 
thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy. Let thy, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. And in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Our New Testament reading for today is a very well-known one. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to the end. It's one that we hear very often at weddings. And so St. Paul writes, If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to, to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned, like a child. When I became a man, I put, a, put away child, childish things. But now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And these things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. He has spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware, to our forefather Abraham, 
that he would grant us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so, friends, our Gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 to 30. It is a continuation of the story of Jesus visiting his home in Galilee, and uh, it begins at uh, verse 21, the same verse that we left off last, last time. Jesus began by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in, in Israel in Elijah's time, and the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a, a widow of Zarephatha. in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up and drove him out of the town and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through, through them and went on his way. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. So friends, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So let me begin today by, by asking a question. What is it that Jesus the Christ wants from those of us who call ourselves by his name? Those of us who call ourselves Christians. I believe our readings for today give us a clue as to what the mission of Christ Jesus must be for each of us here in the church and in the community and in our world. First, as we heard from the prophet Jeremiah, we must remember that we are called to fulfill the mission of our Creator God on this earth. As Christians, when we freely choose to take on the name and birthright of Jesus the Christ, that comes with certain responsibilities. It also comes with certain rights. Now, you know, we, we, in our society today, nobody, everybody wants to talk about their rights, but nobody wants to talk about 
people, few people, want to talk about the responsibility that comes when you do have rights. And friends, we have responsibilities that go along with being citizens of this world. As citizens of the household of Christ, we too have rights and responsibilities. We must now do the work that comes with our choices. Jeremiah says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appoint you as a prophet to the nations. As prophets and partners in Christ Jesus and strengthened by God's Holy Spirit, we are called to show the world around us what being in Christ truly means. We must be examples of God's grace and purpose in the world. You and I must be examples of God's grace and purpose in the world for the rest of those around us. Secondly, our psalm for today, Psalm 71 verses 1 to 6, is even more explicit about how we as believers in the living God should operate in the world and particularly in the church. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust and confidently take refuge. Let me never be put to shame or confusion. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my mouth and the source of my confidence. Upon you have I leaned and, and relied from birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb, and you have been my benefactor from that day. My praise is continually for you. That is from the Amplified Version of Psalm 71. So clearly, we are called to put our trust in God, who has been there for us, for the, from the very beginning, and who knew us even before we knew ourselves. In good times and in bad, our job as people of faith is to understand that it is through the grace and love of God that all creation has come into being, and that it is our attitude of gratitude that will carry us through even the worst of times, our attitude of gratitude. Clearly, friends, we are called to trust in God, who has been there for us from the very beginning, who knew us even before we knew ourselves. Someone sent uh, sent me something on Facebook uh, some time ago that I think is well worth sharing. It said, faith is not the belief that God will do what, what we want. It is the confidence that God will always do what is right. What is right. All too often we think that God should do exactly what we want God to do. We say, well, why is God doing this? Or why is God letting this happen? It's not about us. What we are called to do, however, is the exact opposite of that. We must put our love and our trust and our faith and our future in God's hands. And know that whatever God's, God deems appropriate will be what is good for us and for those around us. 
We must allow God to help us be the extraordinary people who God knows us to be. We are extraordinary. We are beautiful and wonderful because God has made us. It doesn't mean as well that we sit back and do nothing, waiting for God to act. It is that we move forward in faith, knowing that if we put our trust in God, we will always deliver what is best for us. He will always deliver what is best for us. Our, old, our New Testament reading for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 continues on this theme. That above all else, it is God's love that we must shine forth in our own lives and in every situation we encounter. God's love must be brought forward through us into all the world. Every ability and talent we have will amount to nothing if we do not do them in love. Every ability, every talent, every bit of know-how we have must be done in love for God and for those around us. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecies and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a, a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And now these things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Most of us uh, remember that the, uh, the word for love used here in the Greek is agape, which is best translated as charity or charitableness without any expectation of reciprocity or return. It stands in stark contrast to much of how many of us treat one another and even those we say we love. Often we treat those we say we love with more harsh judgment and derision than complete strangers. But we expect them to love and respect us anyway. Likewise, we often look upon people we do not know or people who, have a di who, have a, who are different from us in some way or who speak a different language or have a, a differing opinion with suspicion fear, and even anger. God, however, calls us to treat one another in a spirit, a spirit of charitable love. And this means that we deal with one another with kindness and generosity and patience, empathy and grace. In short, God calls his people to treat everyone, no matter who they are, as we would wish to be treated ourselves. The love of God and the love of neighbor go hand in hand. If God can see the value and beauty in each and every person, we should as well, even and especially when we disagree. Finally, our gospel reading from the Gospel of Luke tells us that we must stay close to the Word of God, 
that the fulfillment of all that God has promised will be for all people and for all time. All we have to do is believe in our hearts and in our minds that which we read and recite with our lips. We actually have to believe in our hearts, in our hearts of hearts, deep down in our very beings, that which comes out of our mouth. people in the synagogue where Jesus grew up did not want to hear that God's grace was for all. They saw themselves as God's chosen chosen people. God, the, the you know, the ones. They were the ones. And we know that the only one, the only true one is from God is Jesus Christ. They saw themselves as superior and above all others. But Jesus was teaching a new way of being. I am doing a new thing. And that new thing is grounded in the love and grace and mercy of God. They understood John the Baptist's message of repentance from sin. But they just couldn't really truly appreciate the good news of Jesus Christ which made God's unending love available to everyone regardless of where they came from what family they were born into what socioeconomic or political status they possessed what they looked like or what man-made rules or righteousness or, 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 or regulations might, ha might say about them. God's message and God's tender love is available for everyone. Friends, by providing examples of how God's love is extended to those who are not Jewish, Jesus shows us that none of us has an exclusive on how God's work of charity can be exercised. Because of our recognition of how God's grace is so freely given, we too have a duty to extend that same charitable love to all we encounter. We must push aside our natural compulsion to be self-centered and self-absorbed. And remember that it is only through the, love, through the life, death, resurrection, and example of Jesus Christ that we are saved for all eternity. So friends, let me sum up. Let's look again at the question that I asked at the very beginning of this talk. What is it that Jesus the Christ wants from those of us who call ourselves by his name? Those of us who call ourselves Christians. First, as believers in Jesus Christ, we must humble ourselves before the living God. Our Christ-like -like example must consequently be of gratitude and trust that God's promise of eternal life will be will be a reality for those who genuinely believe. Secondly, we must avoid becoming commonplace with our work in the church and in the world. We are all extraordinary elements of creation whom God knows and loves. He knows the very hairs on our heads. So let the fruits of our labors, therefore, be good fruits for the cause of God's purpose in our world. Thirdly, we must listen to God's word offered to us through the scriptures and let the word flow through us into every aspect, every fiber of who and what we truly are. Finally, 
I believe that Jesus calls each one of us to be agents of God's good news and to be heralds of God's abiding acts of grace and charity at all times and in all places. God has been our refuse and strength since time began, and we must pledge to pay it forward. Let each of us, therefore, commit ourselves to be partners with Christ Jesus in preparing God's great heavenly, heavenly banquet of love for all to share, so that they may see our good works and glorify the Father for all eternity. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. So friends, as we uh, have heard the word of God open to us through the scriptures, let us affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, who descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Collect for the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Let us pray. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, Make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now the Collect for Peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversary, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so the Collect for Grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the, the uh, prayer for conditions of all people. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all con all sorts and conditions of humanity, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the universal church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the truth in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of love. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, and especially those who have asked us, as unworthy as we are, to pray for them. We pray for Steve and Jane and Danny and Anne and Paul, for Lawrence and Julie, for Eunice, for Jenny and Ethel, for Tom, for Everett, for Jesse, for John and Peggy, 
for Blake and Lois and Donnie, for Joyce and Michael, for Libby, for Dana, for Helen, for Lois, for David and Carol, for Mike, for Jenna and Ed, for Laudia, for Velma, for Diane, for Logan, for Andre, for Hilda, for Verna, for Jean, and for anyone else, known to us or unknown who are in need of God's healing hand today. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their suffering and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Now the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, to give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, and above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Now the uh, prayer of St. Chrysostom, uh, whom, for whom we celebrated his, uh, his feast day uh, earlier this week. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and this promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. So the, let us say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. So friends, as we bring this short time of worship and celebration to a close, let us remember to be there. Be out there with our love and our grace and our charitableness. Let us be emissaries and heralds of God's grace in the world. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present uh, us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.